Actually, one kind of discussion I want to start. If people can leave comments in the section of what race do you think is the most, you know, favored or overpowered to just win most of the time? Like going into a battle, if you're a Terran versus Protoss, who's got the advantage? Like Terran versus Zerg. Like I think recently a lot of people have been giving it to the Terran side, especially for Terran versus Zerg, saying that Terran mech is just too powerful. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, a lot of people are saying that the Terran, uh, the Terran army is just way too OP. And you know what? Again, I hate the word OP because generally it just goes down to sometimes better micro really does play out. But the thing, the thing is that I don't even know what the thing is. I think it was that <laughs> during the first beta phase, That's what Terran, I was say, was, yeah. Terran was really overlooked. I don't think when we all watched the HGH Invitational, we had about two Terran players in the beginning, and they both got knocked out really early, or one played against the other Terran player. And Terran wasn't anywhere near the semifinals or the finals, and people were really sad that no Terran was there. But once the whole mech builds got released, I don't know who pioneered those builds and who first started all that, but once Terran mech just got discovered and people realized how powerful and how much the build orders for Terran you could translate into others. Like you watch TLO, he just goes whatever he wants into battle cruisers and wins <laughs> the game. That's just awesome. I think TLO is the only player that can do that. And th that's exactly what it is. The first phase of the beta, Terran wasn't used much, and people said Terran was a very underpowered. Uh, second phase of the beta, Terran didn't get much in the way of buffs, but people just started using them and seeing exactly that mech play is amazing for Terran, and uh, Terran's now apparently OP. So, you know what, it, it just goes down to how your playstyle is and whether or not you use the race. And I guess Terran's got a very uh, polished look, so that's why Terran is looking the best right now. Zerg, I think, is looking the worst in terms of unit compositions. But they still have, they were very well favored back in the first phases of the, of the beta. Yeah, the whole fast expanding way of uh, Zerg and having Zergling speed. I think Zerg versus Protoss during the first beta, phase of the beta, because I was playing Protoss quite a bit, was really challenging. Zerg would always expand early and just go mass speed link. And they would just kick your ass every time. Like, it was really odd to try to take combat them. And it just kind of changed where people learned to use sentries better, make artificial chokes at the, at the front entrance and... Zerg was really power. I think was really powerful in the early phase. There were a lot of people used them. I just lost to Zerg a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, going on from just uh, the races and how the game's gonna play out as multiplayer, I might as well talk about Battle.net 2.0. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> it's not what uh, Battle.net 1.0 seems, or not what most, uh, even most uh, RTS game uh, servers feel like. Uh, Battle.net 2.0 really has a lot to be. Uh, wished for I guess and there's a couple changes that really need to happen for that channel I mean for, for the for the service actually yeah the whole Bionet 2.0 I do like how they have all that integrated you know mic talking to people and your friends list is really easy to you know get to and you can add people and there's I don't know about the real life friends and the fake online friends the whole that whole thing separating the two groups really whatever if you're gonna do that then whatever I don't know that just seems odd it really does. Like honestly, when I play online, I play with I play with them as if they were my friends, and they're they're my online friends, right? But I, I have no reason to separate them on my games list because on my games list, you're either my gamer buddy or you're not, right? So I like the ability to just basically have all my friends, all my gamer friends, all together, so I can play with whoever I feel like, whenever I feel like. Um, another thing with the Battle.net 2.0 is there was rumors a long a while ago whether or not to be a pay-to-pay -pay service. Um, don't know if it's going to go that way, but if you saw in my unboxing video, I do just, just do uh, finger quotes right now. Troll! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my unboxing video, uh, I did uh, I did read the inside of the box, and it was saying that, you know what, it uh, there's not, uh, pay, the Battle.net 2.0 for this, uh, for StarCraft 2 will not be pay-to-pay. -pay, so, Truth will be getting the game for that fact alone. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people, well, maybe not a lot, but some people must be broke like I am, and if, you know, it's pay-to-play, you don't really want to pick it up then, even though, you know, you're just a big fan of the game. You just don't, don't, don't want to drop, you don't have the money to drop on it, really, more than anything. But oh well. Um, other than that, land support is a huge thing for Battle.net 2.0 that they really, I, I really think, hope that they add to this game. Uh, there's been rumors on the internet that the Korean versions of the game, or the Korean tournament versions of the game, will be getting uh, land support for tournaments because they don't want any lag for the tournaments and everything. Which, you know what, if it if it comes out to be very true, would be awesome because then, you know, there'd be a leaked version online, but who knows about that. Yeah, I really do think they need to add in land support. I would hate to see, you know, really highly anticipated tournaments or really well played tournaments, you know, just go down midway through because the servers need to be updated or, you know, something's happening to the game itself. Yeah, that'd be a very depressing thing, especially if we were, like, holding some kind of tournament and it decides to die on us because Battle.net decides to die on us. So, yeah, now I think moving on to, you know, the old heroes of StarCraft and StarCraft Brood War, the removed units. I know the whole controversy about the Dragoons is over with since, you know, the Immortals have, you know, found their ways to our hearts and we love them now, but 
I don't want to know like what unit does everyone miss the most. I think for me it would be the Zerg Lurker. I just thought the Lurker was the coolest unit in Brood War, and you know since Zerg is kind of lacking in the unit category in this game, it wouldn't be too bad to see that Lurker come back. <laughs> yeah, um, I haven't again like I've said multiple times before. I haven't played uh, the um, I haven't played Brood War, so I don't even know what the hell the Lurker is. All I know is it hit underground and it did shit. <laughs> you could hide it on a ramp. So that is the end of our game. Here it is. So this was uh, me and Arby playing our first game back. When Beta Phase 2 opened up, I did saturate the other expansions and feed them as much money as I possibly could. Okay, you're breaking down the game right now. We have so much that we have to talk about, but you know what? Let's just be really, really quick and very, very uh, concise right now. There is a launch party uh, 24 hours from when this video is going to be up on the west coast of North America. The game will be launched here uh, in the lower mainland of BC in Canada. Canby Street, Best Buy, be there. You will meet me and Truth if you really want to meet us. Or, you know, just be there just for the launch party of the game. Uh, I really don't want to plug Best Buy too much, but they are having some really uh, cool uh, things for the first 150 people. You can win, like, a uh, Toshiba gaming laptop and stuff. Who doesn't want a laptop? Doesn't matter whether or not you game, you just want a laptop, right? So, come down, you know, meet us, uh, and buy the game. Yeah, so, yeah, hopefully people will show up in the, you know, the launch party here in Vancouver will be really big and epic, and... You know, get maybe get them gaming, and I think Best Buy was planning to do some sort of pre-gaming where you can go inside the store and play from 9 to 12 before you can actually buy the game itself. That would be awesome, and technically that would actually work because the game te in North America technically releases at 9 o'clock our uh, PST because on the Eastern Seaboard it'll already be released, so we might be able to actually play it. And all of you guys that actually already have the disc on this side of the north, uh, this side of the continent, you can actually install it probably at 9 o'clock and be fine. Yes. Asshole. So. Leave some comments about the new units, the new races, and which team you think is the most overpowered, which team needs the most working still, and yo, we'll see you guys on Battle.net. Yeah, see you guys next time. Peace out. Peace.